Yeah, I think that's what scares a lot of people yeah. because I mean, we think we're the top of the food chain. Nothing can touch us. Not, monkeys are below us. Everything else is kind of below us. But the moment that we create something that can attack us yeah. by our own hand, it is terrifying. Yeah. It's something that like can dethrone us. It it scares a lot of people. Hello and welcome to the Media Masters Podcast, the show where we dive into a different form of media every single week with a special guest. This week is kind of crazy for us because we had our guest cancel last second, but luckily we have a stand-in today to talk about his social media and movie experiences. So super glad to have you on today, Philip. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. So, um, well, Philip is a movie buff and has some interesting experiences online just as far as his social media presence, I think. So we're going to just chat a little bit about those few topics. So, Philip, I guess just tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin. And So when we talk about social media experiences, we can sum it up by saying I watch a lot of TikToks <laughs> in one day. And a lot of my Apple time is dedicated to social media. So Instagram or TikTok. So, All right. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, tell us a little bit about what, who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm Philip Duncan. I'm 18. I, I love movies and I'm watch two or three just about every day. Yeah, today. <laughs> three today, today, yeah. I just got yeah. out of the cinema. Yeah. Really? Did you go see like two in the cinema today? I saw three in three the cinema in the today. Cinema today. Yeah. What movies did you go see today? Uh, I watched Pig with Nicolas Cage and it was, it was awful. <laughs> I don't recommend it at all. Interesting. <laughs> um, and then The Roadrunner, which is a uh, documentary on Chef and the name escapes me at the moment, but it was pretty good. You watched a documentary on someone, but you don't remember their name now? After yeah. You watched, so it wasn't a very effective documentary? I took a nap at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> I, I fell asleep for a little bit, but it was pretty good. The ending was good. So, Sweet. There yeah. you go. That's what's important. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could... I don't think I could be in a movie theater that long. My back would start hurting. My eyes would start hurting. Well, and just <laughs> Talking about back hurting, <laughs> what you do for a job, right, is you go to Walmart and you throw boxes for hours at a time. Yeah. Uh, at night, I work at the Walmart distribution center yeah. and uh, order filling. So just labeling cases and throwing it on the belt. Yeah. So, so it, it's not like Philip does not stay active at all. He uh, he's, he's a very active person. I know on his Apple Watch, he gets like 2,000 calories a day. So, yeah. He's definitely pretty active. Not like he just goes to movies all day. No, but I wish I could. Some days. Yeah. Some days. Yeah. And yeah. So, me and Philip actually go to movies a lot together because we have the um, Regal... What's it called? The uh, uh, Regal Movie Pass. Yeah, Regal yeah. Movie Pass. Make, basically, you can go and see almost unlimited movies. Um, and... Product placement. Product placement. <laughs> We're sponsored, guys. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, so we go and watch movies all the time. So we kind of are critics a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And and Philip literally sees every movie that comes out, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so far this year, yeah, I'm I'm pretty up to date. Yeah. So we'll. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you're good. Go for it. Do you watch movies often or? Um, I wouldn't say often, but. I mean, if you say one a week, probably is often. Uh, I just watched a movie called Transcendence that I thought was really interesting. It stars, like, it has a lot of big names, but Johnny Depp and Morgan Freeman are the two, oh, wow. and Paul Bettany. Those are the kind of the three biggest okay. ones in it. But there's several other really big, big names in it. Um, really good movie. Uh, I never heard of it. I think it was underwhelming for the critics as well. Uh, and there's a couple different things that I think held it back as far from being stardom but that i really enjoyed that's like the least most recent movie i watched and i did a kind of a film analysis on it yeah but the subject was ai so i love i love technology movies oh yeah so i would actually definitely recommend transcendence it came out in 2014 um so yeah 100 percent recommend that movie for everybody you guys and audience included yeah so ai does that concern you at all like what was the premise of the movie so was ai good so, ai bad <laughs> Yes. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> AI was good and bad. Uh, I don't want to give too many spoils, spoilers, but the premise of the movie basically is there's all these scientists. Um, Johnny Depp acts as a guy named Will. <laughs> and uh, he is a scientist working independently, um, so he's not um, funded by the government or anything, um, to create artificial intelligence. And he has gotten the closest <laughs> of, out of anybody. But um, there's a, a, like a worldwide attack on all these computer tech labs that are producing AI from this kind of uh, terrorist group that's against AI, really, and kills oh. just tons of them, destroys lots of research, and shoots him with a bullet, doesn't kill him, but they find out later that's like laced with some sort of disease. So he's dying, and he uploads himself, or his wife, while he's dying, figures out a way to upload himself and kind of mesh him with this AI, and it's a whole adventure from there. So basically Detroit become human, but a movie. No, not at all. <laughs> I haven't played the game, so. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, way different than I expected it to be. Uh, fantastic movie, though. The premise is so cool, and the ending is very, very, very bittersweet. So mm-hmm. I think they did a very good job. I think there was just a couple things that made it so it wasn't, like, um, worldwide accepted, really. I see. Uh, yeah, so 100% definitely recommend Transcendence. So on the Johnny topic... Depp of ai i'm kind of curious what everyone thinks so a lot of people don't like ai they think it's going to take over the world so i i've done i have a little bit of experience with programming i'm not a programmer by any means but i have done some programming so i do understand a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes but how about you guys um i guess we can start with philip here um what do you think about ai and and the taking over the world (laughs) I, I love how we relate artificial intelligence to automatically taking over the world. Yeah. Because it's going to be used for evil. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I think human culture is all about conquest mm-hmm. and being the top dog. And so we automatically assume that if there's another intelligent life form, mm-hmm. that they would be the same way. But that's not necessarily yeah. true. No. Um, when I think, I think that's fascinating because, like, Perhaps there is other life on another planet and we make all these movies about war against them, but like they're not necessarily <laughs> like us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we are sure. very, um, we are a very horrible <laughs> life form, really. I mean, for all of humanity, we have been destroying each other in the and name of conquest. Everything in between. So, yeah. <laughs> not destroying people, but you know. Just going out and destroying things just because somebody else owns it for the most part. Or disagrees. Yeah, really. or just disagrees. It's two, two different things. It's either, it's either I have a belief and you don't agree with me or I just want to be in control of everything. Yeah. Those are the only War two. over a woman. Sometimes that happens. Too. Yeah, war over like a woman. Like Troy. It's like, ha, you stole my girlfriend. Now I'm going to destroy your entire existence. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, think, I think AI are pretty interesting because um, a lot of people think that they're really scary. Um, Sort of like Ultron, where he just like I love Ultron exists so and then goes over the entire history of the internet and just decides to kill everybody. <laughs> like, I just find that concept super interesting. Well, maybe but that's what I, AI would do. You never know. Maybe that's what we they don't would know. Do. Yeah, because they'd um, be like, you know, I am peaceful, but we cannot coexist with these people. Yeah, destroyed. Yeah. So I think the main thing that people are afraid of is like morality. Like, how would something that's artificial view, like morality. Like they don't have morals. So how would they know, you know, computers see things pretty one-sided. It's like... Um, well, yeah, because then there's no there's no breathing room for yeah. a law, like speeding. You know, it's yeah. like suddenly it's... Like you don't speed, you're done. <laughs> you're out of here. So like, for example, um, you can take that um, ethics pro- uh, problem, like with the train where there's like five people on the tracks and then one like kid. Who are you going to have it run over if they're both, you know, if you have to only choose between the two, would you have it run over the kid or would you have it run over the five adults? The like, kid. No. As, <laughs> well, we see where you stand. <laughs> anyway, um, that's something that is really interesting because AI doesn't really think the same way that we do. It that was problems. a big point of the movie, actually, early on yeah. in the movie. It was a big thing, like, you know, uh, that Penn, which was the name of his particular artificial intelligence was oh it can't tell the difference between right and wrong mm-hmm. yeah it just sees things as 
as problems that need to be solved rather than um, finding a way around something. It's just like, okay, well, we can fix it by doing this. Let's do that, you know. Yep. But, you know, most of that is in movies. From what we've seen from actual artificial intelligence is if, like, the, the ones that are trained by people. Um, I don't know if you guys have, have heard of this, but I know that, like, Google's done it and, like, other companies. But they've created an artificial intelligence chatbot. <laughs> and then people will just troll it. And then eventually it becomes like suicidal and just memes about everything. <laughs> like, have you have you he heard of that? I know there's been a couple different um, times where that has happened, but so how close would you say we are to that now? To Ultron? To AI? Because oh, I mean, a Tesla can a true, drive itself. A true artificial intelligent like robot. Yeah. Um, we could definitely do it now. Like, like so you know Boston Dynamics, they create robots right but they create them to do certain tasks like go to this spot pick up this item take it somewhere else you know they don't create them to be like hey jim my name is robot i'm you know blah, blah. they don't you know all of the robots that we have are created for a specific purpose but if you create it just to learn and try to become its own thing i i don't i don't know <laughs> like yeah i mean have you heard about elon musk's uh Neuro, neuro neurotransmitter. Yeah, yeah. It, I know that you're super excited about that. It it's scary, but it it could solve a lot of problems. It could cause a lot of problems as well. Yeah. But are you familiar with what it is? Uh, not really. Yeah. Uh, you so fill us in on basically, it it's a quarter incision inside a skull, uh, put in with a microchip that would go inside your skull, and then you would be able to communicate to other people with that microchip without talking. Nice. So that would be communication be without fast, verbal. Fantastic. Absolutely. So reading Telepathy. thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's Telepathy. a step. Jeez. That's a step forward. Interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting. So basically giving people another sense. Well, I just watched a video the other night about an, like a computer learning and understanding your voice and recreating it, which oh, oh, could yeah. also create a lot of problems, oh, yeah. especially with the deep fakes. Now. Yeah, deep mm. fakes and then and the you, voice If you put fake. the deep fakes and the voice deep fake together and you create me <laughs> and you go do something that you know and video it and then claim that was will hamilton doing yeah. that like so, that could cause a lot of problems you'd be like i that wasn't me but it looks and sounds like me yeah so like going from that point artificial intelligence most of what it's created for is to take something learn from it and try to recreate it you know so like with the deep fake and stuff i don't know if anyone has heard of um the game forza they what they do is they create drive avatars through ai that race like you would race and you can basically race against your friends that aren't there but they're scaled a little bit differently because it's a game but like they're so realistic they could literally drive that race exactly how that player would drive which is weird and you apply something like that to deep fakes then you can literally create people after they're gone or when they're still here <laughs> like, yeah so you could apply that to cinema because no one wants to play Hitler in 2021. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, have, have you guys seen, I mean, I know Will has seen Rogue One. So, Grand Moff Tarkin, his actor, I can't remember the name right now, but his actor died know. and they recreated him. Same with Leia. They recreated her as younger with basically her voice. <clears throat> and they recreate that. Like, that, that's a really interesting point how they can literally recreate people like just that that don't exist anymore <laughs> wasn't there a, a christmas movie with tom hanks where what was the name of it ah uh, the polar express oh, where yeah. it was just so realistic no that was the uh um oh what's that called the point where it's like you can obviously tell that it's fake but it's just close enough to real that it's like un oh the uncanny valley effect yeah yeah, um, when I first saw Polar Express as a kid, like, yeah. I was so weird. I was like, how is there a train on snow? <laughs> it, yeah. it looks so real. Yeah. But what is what is the Uncanny... Uncanny Valley, I think, I can't remember if that was a movie or a game, but it's basically, that was like the first um, part where uh, people that weren't actual people, they're just CG that, that looked 
real enough, but it felt off. Like, it just didn't feel real. Because I know for movies, they can recreate people and you can never tell that they weren't an actual person. Now, most of the times when we think of that, it's when they weren't recreated quite well enough and you can just tell that something's just slightly off. But there's a few movies out there that, like, have just completely fake people as the focus in the movie, like the subject in the movie, and you can never know that they weren't there, which is kind of insane to me. I don't know why I thought about this, but why the heck is the CGI in Narnia better than the new Hobbit movies? That's because they use it sparingly. Narnia is like full of CGI. Yeah, well, well I feel like so Hobbit, when I first saw that, yeah. I always just mind blown. Yeah, no, that's not relevant. But Narnia, like, no. well, no, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, I know when I saw Narnia, um, it, it almost like threw me off how real some of it looked. Like the, I knew I had Aslan, nightmares. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. that... I had nightmares from some of the, uh, the like boggles and stuff. Oh, they, they just threw me off. Yeah, but so weird. yeah, so I think it's definitely how CG is applied and how long they have to make it because so many movies now get, get rushed and they don't have time like black panther i hated the cg in black panther superman's it, mustache and justice league yeah like those are those are prime examples of a movie that had the budget but they didn't have the time black panther for example that was a that the, was weird the fight scene yeah they um, like elongated randomly i felt like yeah so they didn't their movements man. were i mean in a superhero movie, movements are going to be unnatural because they're portraying unnatural people, like people that are stronger or whatever. But physically superior. Yeah. So <laughs> I felt like it was way too like cartoony almost. And Black, Black Panther. Panther in the in that fight scene um, between um, T'Challa and the other guy who had the suit. Yeah, I agree. But it wasn't like cartoon to the like. Well, it yeah, wasn't it's... cartoon because it wasn't good. Like. Cartoons are still yeah. really good animation, like the Spider Man Morale, like yeah, Miles no, Morales. That, that animation is amazing, and you can do really good animation. But yeah. That, yeah, I totally agree. Black Panther seemed like cartoonish to the point where it was just bad. Yeah, no, it it took me out of the movie. Like it made me not like the movie because it was too rushed. I know. I remember thinking, why why does everybody like this movie? <laughs> like I did. I just came out of that movie. Me and my dad went together. This like only Marvel movie he's seen. <laughs> We were just both disappointed. We expected a lot more because, you know, it was like rated 90-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So. Yeah. Which you, I, I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes, but still, I was just looking forward to the movie. Yeah. It wasn't a bad movie, but... No, they, they, they no. Were, no not, not yeah. by any means. It was nothing special. But I think it was just a middle-tier Marvel yeah. movie. It was not special, but it wasn't bad or anything. Yeah. Wasn't so, so what's the top tier? Why? Well, Infinity War. Infinity, Infinity War. War, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Iron Man. Which one? Like the original Iron Man? Yeah, the first Iron Man. That's a good one. I love Robert um, Downey Jr. Probably both the first Captain Americas. What about the original Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> that, that really doesn't come up in a conversation. There's no reason for it. So. Does that even have the Marvel logo on I've it? I've literally oh, yeah. seen like 45 minutes of that Bro, movie. Stan Lee's in that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't, like, I, I've seen the movie, sort of. It felt... Like bits and pieces yeah. of it because it's on TV and occasionally I would like watch a little bit of it, get bored, and leave. <laughs> I've never seen it all the way through, though. Okay, so I just pulled up the definition for the uncanny valley effect. So, the uncanny valley effect refers to an eerie feeling of unfamiliarity people get when observing or interacting with robots um, that resemble humans almost, but not quite perfectly. So, if, if you're viewing like a robot that has facial features and everything, it's like... You can tell that that's not a person, but it's trying to resemble one. And just seeing it like move and like blink and stuff just throws you off. Yeah, it's weird. Like I'd rather have a cartoony robot because it's not trying to be a person. Right, but when it's trying to be a person, it's just like it's just like, like it's kind of scary, probably. Yeah. Have you guys seen Westworld? I have not. I still want to. Though. Um, have you? A little bit. It's it's, it's cryptic. It's not. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I, I've seen it. I've seen Well, I've seen at least the first season and watched the first couple episodes of the second season. Um, not that the second season was bad, but the first season was just so good, in my opinion, that I couldn't really watch the second season much because it's like they just switched up the whole 
they just were trying to prepare for like just tons of seasons. And but the first season was like a really story from start to finish that was really fascinating. I mean, it, it was a weird show for sure, but it was all about AI again. And um, it was interesting because these robots weren't built to be AI, but they were built to be impossibly like you could not tell the difference between them and a human but they weren't built to be ai hmm. so they weren't built to have be able to learn and know and understand things but but they were built to be like perfectly perceivably human so just having a conversation with them you could eventually you know figure out that they weren't human but because they just programmed and programmed more human features and quirks into these robots, they eventually just naturally started to act so much like a human that they programmed so much information into these guys that you couldn't tell that they weren't no matter what you did anymore. And so they basically became human, even though they still didn't have the capacity to learn. Yeah. That just freaks me out. Yeah, I think that's what scares a lot of people. Yeah. Because, I mean, we think we're the top of the food chain. Nothing mm -hmm. can touch us. Not, monkeys are below us. Everything else is kind of below us. But the moment that we create something that can attack us yeah. by our own hand, it it's terrifying. Yeah. It's something that like can dethrone us. It it scares a lot of people. Yeah. Watch Westworld. Seriously. Go <laughs> and watch Westworld. That's my second suggestion. Go it's kind of like it. Fallout. Yeah. Well. Fallout 4. You guys ever played Fallout 4? No. Nah. I mean, I played a little well, bit of it, but I haven't so actually like, gone through a story Basically, anything. there's the Institute, which was a just a bunch of science people. They built themselves a giant bunker and made synthetic beings that were basically people. And so the people of the Commonwealth would occasionally go missing and then show back up, but they weren't quite right. You know, they they were they weren't who they actually were. Like they remember certain things and they acted similarly, but they were off because they were replaced by these synths. Ah, so they, they weren't so, real. Yeah, they so if somebody didn't like somebody, they just call them a synth and then they try to like kill them. So like that's kind of like a uh, dystopian. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if if we have robots that can basically look sound, feel, act like people, it's going to be dystopia. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think any good can come from that. Interesting. Because I feel like if somebody has that much power, I feel like they're not going to use it for good. <laughs> so what, what makes a person not want to use a giant robot that can do just about anything and not use it for good? Well... What I'm saying is when you can't tell if it's a person or not and you can like spy or whatever, mm. where is the limit? <laughs> like at that point, if you can't tell, why stop? You know, I think it's a interesting concept because if you go about creating those sorts of things to do what they do best and they go out and do those, like I don't see where you would have a stopping point. I don't know. So there, there is no stopping point at this. Then we could have stopped at cell phones in the car or bank well, phones. But and that's I mean, the thing. We're up to iPhone twelve. Technology moves forward at a seemingly um, exponential rate. And the thing is, though, silicon is getting to its breaking point. We're we're coming up on that point where we're going to have to change what we make our electronics out of because. We're almost maxing it out. Like we're we're finding ways to stretch it farther and farther, but we're getting close to well, that point. Well, it keeps on getting smaller and smaller as far as like the chip set. Well, that's go. the thing. We're getting very close to that point. They can't get a whole lot smaller. Well, because it's what? Like, is it at three nanometers yet, or is it just at five? I th I think three nanometers in is in. Like, what even is a nanometer? It's so tiny. Well, nanometers aren't size. Really? No, they're not. It's. I mean, it should be a size, and they basically are talked at about as size but they're not it, it's it's off from a little nanometer it, it's interesting but yeah. we're getting close to that point where we can't shrink them down anymore with what we have 
which I think brings up the point of AI again. That's how many companies are going about making improvements is through artificial learning to take what they know and and their physical, you know, chip and stretch it out to be as good as it can be. So. So, I mean, obviously our next stop is quantum computers. Oh, yeah. Right. Because now we're kind of at the end of the era of whatever, whatever, whatever our current binary yeah, binary age the age of binary computers um so is quantum computer going to be the next decade and then everything's going to change once that oh becomes. yeah no once we get quantum computing there's it's going to be so much better than what like, we have now it's cameras cameras are going to change cars are going to change cameras right? will be like, so much better than our eyes that our eyes will feel like <laughs> because right now our cameras can't like process like we would have the ability to record whatever we wanted yeah. to it's just a the processing power and it'd be so enough. expensive but and it, yeah it'd be absurd it'd be stupid expensive. expensive so what is quantums so quantum computing the um, binary is <laughs> two digits so, so zero binary one, binary, right, binary yeah. yeah binary is binary, zero burn, burn, and one <laughs> so, <laughs> shut up anyway binary uses zeros and ones and then uses those zeros and ones to make the other characters like one or two or three or a b c any of those so a quantum computer can use one, two, three, A, B, C. It can use all of that. Yeah, zero through so, nine. So instead of having like 20 ones and zeros represent like three characters, you can just have those three characters. So it gets exponentially more powerful and it can focus on multiple things at once. So that's one of the greatest uh, bottlenecks of our current binary computers is that they can't really do multiple things at once. They have to split up what they're doing. <laughs> like. They have to do a little bit on this one thing, switch subjects, go to another thing. Like a quantum computer, just everything. Like it's it's insane. But we haven't quite figured them out. No. Which is why we aren't using them. Exactly. They have and, to be and, at a perfect temperature. Like Yeah. They, it, we, we're basically where we were when our current computers took up an entire um, floor of a warehouse. Yeah. And like when you would like take a five megabyte hard drive, but it would take up this whole room yeah like that's where we are with quantum computers we're like in the 40s of, of computers right now but that means in our lifetime the amount of growth we're gonna see yeah well we're gonna it said that millennials are the first um generation that won't die because whatever. with quantum with quantum Wh computing whatever <laughs> I, that's not happening okay it's gonna end before we figure that I out i think so too but See, that, that brings up another subject of once you go that far, there's no, like, where's the stopping point? Like, quantum computing is so much more powerful than what we have now. We're, we'll literally be able to cure cancer by just running simulations because our current computers are nowhere close to as powerful. Like, I have a nice computer. So what if we don't figure out quantum computers? What if everybody's like, yeah, we're going to be able to figure this out. It's going to be awesome. And then they just can't figure it out. If we don't, then we're going to be stuck with AI. <laughs> I mean, AI, quantum AI is going to be like stupid smart. But like current AI is what's going to take us to more powerful devices. So like an iPhone, it's, it's great and they make it better every year. But one thing that continues to make it much better is the software behind it rather than the hardware because the software is what makes um all the images look better so if you take a traditional camera like a dslr or a mirrorless camera you take that photo from the camera it's just a raw image nothing is done to it but you take an iphone image and there's so much processing that goes into that to make it look the best right you compare them to an actual camera image that you edit it won't be anywhere close right but an iphone can do that almost instantly and make it look really nice. But that's because of software and AI. Well, you give a consumer person a $1,000 camera with a kit lens, um, like an 18 to 135, 3.5, 5.6. And they will still take better images on their iPhones. Yeah. So, yeah. I, because the processing on it is so good. And mm -hmm. the actual work of editing takes technical knowledge. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that that's another thing. It's like AI can make things better, but they can't they can't make art. 
yet. Well, they can't make inspired art. <laughs> they can make abstract art. Well, if they if they would become self aware and actually have a like if, if you could actually create something that had real life to it, then maybe it could. But I mm-hmm. don't think it's possible for us to create real life. No. I don't well, think I don't think we'll ever play true god i think no you well, i think we'll have people imitation. can't make a soul <laughs> we'll, we'll have imitation of a soul yeah it that we're already imitating god you know <laughs> well trying our best yeah. <laughs> nobody's well, ever done it right we'll ever be able to but people have always tried <laughs> well they've always tried to be god well yeah try yeah, to be kinda, god and try to be try to be better but they've always failed this comes back to transcendence again gosh are you guys really need we're to going very deep I did not know we were going to go this deep today. Well, I thought we were going to talk about how Philip gets free stuff on social media, but now we're just talking about AI. I like this better. This is more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to a cool place. But uh, alrighty. Well, any other thoughts you have on AI, Philip? Uh not till it starts to think for me. Huh? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. Then then you can just go on cruise control. Have you guys seen The Matrix? Yes. I just started it yesterday and couldn't get into it. I didn't really like it that much. It's like I got to the point where he gets out of the matrix. I was about like 15 minutes past the what point where he gets out in the matrix. Where he gets out of the matrix. <laughs> and I was just like, eh, not, not my movie so far. I'm going to try to get through it, of course. But I was like, I have better things to do. I'm going to go do other things. It's one of those movies where like everyone says it, it's a classic and you know it's a classic, but it's hard to believe. Like it's hard to watch. It's, I, I the real reason I'm watching is for the music. So understandable. I I watched Space Jam two, the new one, oh. a new legacy, and then I went back and watched the old one, and they're both stupid. I wouldn't say stupid. <laughs> it's just that I thought it was better. Yeah. When I first watched, they're it. both kids' movies. That's that's the thing. Everybody's going into it. Oh, this is gonna be such a great movie, but it's like it's a kids' movie. I, it's supposed to be goofy and bad. <laughs> yeah, the same with The Godfather. Like they're. The Godfather. Yeah. There's even some, you're going to hate me, some Star Wars movies that I don't find the best when I rewatch them. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like, I understand what you're saying about Star Wars too, but even like, yeah. I, I know well, what you're saying. Or like, they're more famous than the movie itself is. Right. Like, yeah. I, I think that a lot of people when they're talking about Star Wars are just like, now they're just talking about their interpretation of Star Wars or what like it would be now. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I think, it's a great movie, and I love watching it. But like, it if Star Wars was made nowadays, like just as a new well, concept, it would, it would fail. They did. Well, I, I'm saying like if if it if Star Wars never happened, but it happened now, mm. it would fail. Yeah, with the same. Well, I mean, ever with that same just hero plot. Yeah. Well, Star Wars is what popularized the whole genre, like the whole sci-fi genre. They really took it. And took the best parts of it and made it into something that everyone loved, and it it changed cinema forever. It it's just insane, like what what it did to change movies. I think nowadays we kind of run into movies not being creative; they're just going this safe route. Well, that's what I feel about most Marvel movies. Yeah, which we talked about actually yeah, in the last yeah podcast, for sure. I mean. They're they're good. They're entertaining, but that's, they don't that's take risks. That's what's so good about them is that yeah. the Marvel movies are the most entertaining movies. Just easy to watch, fun movies to watch. Mm-hmm. And the reason you watch them is because there's just this whole consistent story, and you already know the characters. Yeah. Um. And that's what sets Infinity War apart from the others. I feel like. What? Because it doesn't have the same feeling as the rest of them do. Yeah, I it feel left like in- you kind of like confused and, and shocked it's like infinity what war was happened? good yeah, yeah. Very I, good. I don't think anyone will anything will ever match that feeling <laughs> after mm-hmm. infinity war just walking out of the theater just like what the heck well, just happened? it's just the whole movie it's paced well the story is good mm-hmm. it's just and it's just i mean it's it's a good movie yeah. uh, no as uh as humans we are drawn to stories that's why we love going to the movies love watching movies right. love reading books love listening to podcasts or listening to music. Everything is a story and we're all in it for the adventure or living a life that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And we want to look and see what else is out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, that's actually a really good point because we can't do everything 
but we could watch other people do the cool things. Exactly. Which it goes back to last week, like Kylie game streams and people like to watch her games. Mm -hmm. Like I can't imagine really the draw of watching people play video games for several hours, but apparently there's people that do it. And we'll watch a football game all day. Yeah. Yeah. And I I can't play football like that at all. Yeah. (laughs) I probably have more fun watching the Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs play than I go, than I do actually playing myself, even though I love playing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, media allows you to do everything you ever wanted. Yeah, it gives you it in gives a, in you a way. the experiences you were never able to actually have. It's a connection to something that's just not there. So, mm-hmm. but uh, as we talk about that, like you know, li- living through or not necessarily living through, but um, movies, games, all of that is our current way of telling a story um do you think that it will move more towards interactive stories like single player story games or do you think that will continue with mostly movies Uh, it'll fluctuate i mean there were times where solo player games were the one thing Mm -hmm. and then it went uh, multiplayer Mm -hmm. where it was interaction but now it's leaning back towards single player games it's just whatever draws attention yeah this is a story. Why yeah. did Fortnite work so well? Because it was free. Well, it was free <laughs> and it had mass appeal. But what was the mass appeal? The mass appeal was it was colorful and you could play with all your friends on any platform. And it was easy. It was right? easy. Yeah. Anybody could get a victory royale. Like I literally no. it's so no. bad. And I at the beginning won yeah. a game or two. You know, yeah. it's like doing nothing. Yeah. And and people pe- people love to have community around things they enjoy. So if you create something like a multiplayer game that um, is different every time you play it, like a battle royale, right? That's how that kind of propelled that. Well, but if you look, it, it at never this, dies yeah. because you never finish the story. Exactly, and you can you can always have a different experience playing the same game. Right. That's why the single player failed so bad because it sucks. Uh, <laughs> you do I, the I same even thing. It. I, I bought it for free V-Bucks because the, the single player story, you do the exact same thing literally hundreds of times and it doesn't change. Like they add little bits here and there, but it, it's basically just recycled crap. <laughs> but the same could be said for Minecraft. There's no actual narrative or story well, to Minecraft. Well, there's no story to it. There's no there's story, just, but there every is. Every single time you play, it's a different yeah. story. You know, but, you... well. I guess, I mean, they, you can literally do anything in Minecraft, and I think that's the draw because yeah. there's, I mean, there is like a thing, there's a game to beat. Yeah, but, you make your own story. But there, you, you get to go about it differently every time you do it, and yeah. you get to try different things. And Yeah. I mean, for me, it's no video game is really a good draw for me except for sports video games, but yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, I can see the appeal of a game like Minecraft or Ark. Yeah. Yeah, so in that way, Minecraft and Ark are a little bit similar. There is a slight story. There's more so in Ark, less so in Minecraft. But Minecraft does have a little bit of a story that kind of gets you to ask these questions like, hey, why are there villagers here, but they're so stupid? (laughs) You know, like, why are there all these ruined things, but nothing that could actually make those right now? You know, and like, at the when you beat the Ender Dragon, there's actually like a thing that plays that you read. It's basically saying that there's like Minecraft gods. <laughs> it's like most people don't even under like see that, but that that's what I think is great about Minecraft. You can create your own story and kind of come up with how you think it happened. That, that's it's interesting to me that people like that though, because people like things being handed to them yeah and they don't like actually having to work for something where it feels like minecraft you have to work for that yeah um but like when you go see a movie you literally just sit and experience everything Mm -hmm. and a lot of times the reason people don't like movies is because it didn't do what they wanted it to do yeah for sure Mm. (laughs) yeah they go in with experiences or with uh expectations right and but i guess in a game like minecraft is you always set your own expectations and you can meet them every single time i want to do this but in like a multiplayer game like fortnite you go in with the expectations of i have no idea what's going to happen yeah and so when you play multiplayer games like warzone or fortnite Mm. battle royale games you're like 
I the, the entertainment I'm looking for today is unexpected and surprise. Mm-hmm. Like that's a form of entertainment, surprises. Whereas when you go, I don't know, play Minecraft, you kind of have something already built in your head even if you're not realizing it. Yeah. Like Yeah, you have you see just some plot of land, you know, and you you visualize your base there, you know? And that brings you back to it. It's like, hey, I need right. to do this. I need to do this. And there's always, you know, there's always something to keep you coming back. But so that could be the draw for like painters yeah. or artists. It's like they see something, or even sculptors, they see something in the stone, and they just need to break it out. Yeah, that's the difference between like an artist and just an everyday person is they already see the finished product before they begin. That's where, like. You can be a good photographer without being a good artist, but you can't be a great photographer or mm-hmm. videographer because you have to be able to see. You have to be able to like plan out and yeah. see, visualize what it's going to yeah. be like. The end product. But like you can get all of your technical aspects correct. You know, you can get your exposure, your framing, you can get do everything right and the film can look great, but it's not going to yeah. be, you can, you can it's do- not going to match like people like Wes Anderson and Christopher yeah. Nolan. You can follow all the rules. Who actually have a real like art yeah. history style. Like all these amazing directors have this vision and then they go and they shoot to create the vision and they shoot it and they, they know how to shoot it and what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, which of course the DOPs like interpret that. But Yeah. And yeah, you can you can follow all the rules and do everything that you're supposed to do. But it still may not flow because you don't have a reason for doing that. Like most great films aren't great because they follow the rules. They're great because they made their own path with their own unique visions and executions on that. To an extent, like I guess that's great films, but if you're talking about entertaining films, yeah, like Marvel movies, Marvel movies don't do anything. They just, they literally, Every single story is the exact same. Yeah. They have it set out and then they, get, they go, okay, so these are some ideas we have. Let's fit them into this so we know that we can make a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah. And when they did Infinity War, they didn't do that. That film, mm-hmm. that film is nowhere near paced at all. Yeah. And they tried right. to do that again in Endgame. I don't think they did it as well in Endgame. Um, but they did it really well in Infinity War. And then after those two movies, they were like, okay, well, now we're going to go back to the safe movies. And I don't think they've made a non-safe movie since. So. Oh. so you're a musician and you write songs. Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> so do you have a cookie cutter format for every song you write? Or do you come in each day and make a new song with a new format with a new concept? You know, that's an interesting point, And this could go on and on and on <laughs> and on. So it's interesting because when you've written music for a long time, but you don't understand you don't really understand music theory well enough, you can get to a point where you do kind of write every song the same, where you where you don't even try to. But I've seen myself do this, where I've written six songs and they follow the same format every time because I know it works. I know it comes out with a decent product at the end. And this is kind of like my style, I guess. Mm-hmm. But then when I realize that, I'm like, wow, like the music theory of that is like all the same. And so... I have decent theory knowledge, but it takes a a real a, a lot probably further along than I do. So I say my music probably is more of the entertaining, similar bland stuff versus uniqueness. Which have you heard of like Jacob Collier? I think that's his name. I'm not familiar. He's a musician that is fantastic, um, and unique, and every song is unique. But it's not music that I really want to listen to. Like, it, it is good music. It's good listening music. But for me, it's like, it doesn't fit into that perfect picture that I hear every single mm-hmm. time. And yeah, I definitely fall into that area where I just write the, like the same song over and over and over and over and over again. Like, it, it's not just like you can watch these more movies and they're completely different, but they aren't. That's kind of my music, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I... But I definitely try now, like for the last couple of years, I've been trying really hard every time I write a song to make it unique and special in its own way and like still fit into that way where like (sighs) 
where it's easy to listen to and people know what to expect to a degree, but that it's still special in its own right. Yeah. So sort of like the uh, Avatar movie (laughs) where they made music that was different from anything that people have heard because it's supposed to portray a completely different world with a completely different, you know, everything, animals, people, everything. And they didn't put it in the final movie because it was too different, you know? I've always wanted to see that that cut of Avatar where they have that unique Avatar of music instead of traditional Western music. No, we get we get stuck in a pattern where we do the same thing every single day. We get up seven a.m., go get a coffee, and go to the gym, work out, mm-hmm. and then go to work. Yeah, and go to sleep, wake up, do it again, mm-hmm. and before you know it, a week has gone by. Yeah, and after a week, it's another week, two weeks, that three weeks, your entire life. It's a month. You do the same thing year in and year out. Yeah, and you've really done nothing different. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might have a a great job, but that's all you have. Is mm-hmm. You just have your job. You have what happened at work that day, what happened at the gym that day. Yeah, and that is it. There's no mm-hmm. no stories, no differences, no experiences. Mm-hmm. And if we do the same thing day in and day out, then we become just zombies. Yeah, zombies. Yeah. Like Shaun of the Dead. That's basically what that's about. It's like doing the exact same thing every day, looking like a zombie. Then when the actual zombie apocalypse happens, it's not any different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How, do, how do you get out of normalcy? You switch it up. You do something Take completely risks. out of the ordinary. So what is the risk that you're taking currently? Um, none right now. Yeah? Yeah. None. I'm, I'm stuck and doing the same thing every every day. And I can sit here and tell you not to do it but if i don't do it myself it benefits me nothing but so you are stuck in normalcy but what does that look like for you are you uncomfortable or not obviously you're not uncomfortable no that's the thing because it's the definition of comfort Mm -hmm. but are you unsatisfied always if i'm not if i don't feel like i i feel okay let me take a minute i know i can reach more than what i'm doing in my life right now I know I can do more things than just just working. I know there's more out there to experience than what I'm experiencing right now. And for someone or me to get those experiences, you need to do something drastic and you need to do something that makes you uncomfortable. You just need to get out of the normalcy, the cycle of what you're doing and do something different. Have you figured out what that's going to look like for you? Uh, just when the opportunity presents itself, I will yeah. absolutely jump on it. Because, yeah, you're, you're not the person to shy away from opportunities. And you're okay with those opportunities not always working out, which I think is a, a big thing that's different from a lot of people, is that you're okay... To take risks yeah, and have them risks. fail. But, like, yeah. some people take risks one time when that risk doesn't pan out. Mm-hmm. They never take the risk again, I'd say. Yeah. I probably have fallen into that. No, we just, I don't have any regrets. No. I don't want to live my life and be 60. It's like, I could have done this, but I didn't. Yeah. I could have done this, but I didn't. I just did this instead, and that's all I did. Yeah. What it could have should is not where you want to be yeah, in life. Definitely. I don't want to be the guy that, yeah, retires at 60 with plenty of money mm-hmm. in the bank account, but like, I just worked a nine to five job every mm-hmm. day, rest for my whole life and it wasn't a horrible job but it wasn't a very fun or satisfying job or and it's like sure I did a bunch of cool things in my off time but I just wasted so many hours of my life not actually living my life when I have grandchildren I want to be able to tell them stories of oh, yeah. what happened when I was younger yeah <laughs> things that I did I don't want to tell them I worked yeah yeah it would be so cool to be that guy that's just like oh I've done that there's, you know, just talking about something that's really cool. Oh, right. I'm to do this. Oh, oh, I've done that. Yeah, I would, I would love. Yeah, dude, being the guy that's yeah. done everything, and then they think you're lying. <laughs> that's that's the best. Is like just being able to say I've done that and have people think that you're lying because you've done so much. So I spent two weeks in Jamaica. Oh, I spent six weeks in Jamaica, and when I've been there, I've been there with this really old, like eighty four year old man named Ron, and Ron is who we want to be. Ron has lived every second of his life um, from like 
skydiving over 70,000 times in his life. Shoot. Yeah. Like, I was like, I don't understand how that's possible. Are you lying? He's like, no, I'm not lying. I've <laughs> actually done it. I still go sky- skydiving almost every day. And he's like 84. Wow. He just goes every day. He likes, loves to skydive. Well, I guess but that like, means that skydiving is pretty safe. If he's yeah, gone that many times, and, he hasn't died yet. <laughs> and he, yeah. <laughs> and he goes and he, you know, just goes yeah. to Jamaica like four times a year just and, and goes up in the mountains and serves people and adopts coyotes mm-hmm. and raises them well, as like, and he just goes all over the world and he's just 84 year old man and so that, that has done everything that you can possibly think of, like hiking through the rain, Amazon rainforest. Like, I mean, wow. Just that's the guy fought an alligator. Yeah, like that's the guy that if his parachute fails, he's gonna be okay. Like, yeah. Well, he knows he's the okay Lord with too. That. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's gonna be okay with that. He's like, I've I've enjoyed my time. He's literally like, I've done absolutely everything. Yeah. And I don't care. You know, yeah. I think that's actually kind of what he's thinking right now. Yeah. He's like, I'm still he's gonna like, go, one of these times. I'm still <laughs> gonna go skydive because like I'm perfectly fulfilled in my life. I found yeah. my life purpose, and I've done absolutely everything I could possibly want to do. I'm actually sure he still has things he wants to do, and that's why he just keeps on going and going oh, yeah. and going. Yeah. So do you guys feel like you're living a purposeful life? A purposeful life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I feel like there's never that point where you're like, well, I'm there. I think there's always, you could always do more. Always room mm. to grow. Yeah. yeah. I, see, I have plenty of days where I don't have, I'm not living a purposeful life. And then I have days where I am. I have the ability to live a purposeful life every day. See, I'm a small business owner. I'm doing the thing I love, um, like interviewing people, making fun videos, going out. But then I have days where I am absolutely just so lame and don't do anything, don't do anything productive even, and just I feel horrible afterwards. Mm -hmm. Like actually, even my body physically feels horrible after a day where I am doing nothing. It's all about the grind. (laughs) And it's interesting, I think, because I have the ability every single day to have a purposeful life, but I don't always choose it. And so it's even when given the opportunity, I don't take it every day. Yeah. I Yeah. That, that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Everyone has the opportunity, but not very many people take it. And even the people that do don't always take it every time well, in our in our in our current world especially in the united states in this like technology mm-hmm. it's just incredible the opportunities that we have yeah and Anyone the ability to literally do anything yeah. that you want to and i mean create a movie on your iphone and yeah. it can look fantastic it's like yeah. <laughs> you start a podcast <laughs> 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 um and this is just something that's fun for us but like yeah we're being purposeful on this. Like this is like, maybe this people will never see this podcast. Maybe Mm -hmm. this will never go anywhere, but we are learning things through it. We're getting better at things. Yeah. We're going to get better. And it's just like, what would I be doing tonight if I wasn't doing this? You know, um, it took like two hours of work to get all this set up every single week, maybe even more sometimes. And then editing. So like it, it takes work to do purposeful things. But, like, it's so fulfilling. For sure. Yeah, there, there's n- not a better feeling than just after you go out and decide you're going to do something and just do that. And then at the end of the day, you've, you've worked hard and you have that finished product. Even if not very many see it, it's still fulfilling. So what's the next step for you guys? You just had a great shoot last week. and yeah. You guys just launched a podcast. Just finished and- it literally five minutes before driving over here to do this yeah so you guys have had an amazing year yeah so what's the next step for you guys for me it would be not only continuing but expanding to a point where i have to say no um and i do say no to things now but i mean like have to say no to things that i would die to say yes to now because you're so busy. Yeah, so busy. And I'd love to get to a point where I can have employees that that do all of this thing, all of these things, and that I can sort of set back and say, hey, I want you to be here 
because this is your strong suit. I want you to be here because I know that I can't do it all. <laughs> you know, I have my strengths. I have my weaknesses. And I know that scaling up would help a lot with that because I can't do it all. You know, nobody can. Everybody has their certain strengths. So that's for me. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, growth, obviously. Yeah. My business isn't at a point where I can't handle 10 times the amount more work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I know some weeks are really busy. Other weeks, there's nothing. There's just, it's just dead. And that's yeah. the weeks that I'm like, okay, well, I got to go work on like, yeah. my that's own personal where, stuff that's where we do yeah like youtube stuff like that we're mm-hmm. like hey we have time to do this let's go do something i think besides getting some cashews in my tummy <laughs> my next step is i don't know getting some real jobs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I love filming weddings but there is a cap to where weddings can get you yeah and i can I can still grow, go farther on the level of weddings I shoot right now. Oh, yeah. But right now, my wedding work has gotten to me the, the max that it can push my actual film and photo and audio business. It's not going to push that this business further any. So I need to start working yeah. with businesses. Really, that's kind yeah. of my next step is just working more with actual companies and mm-hmm. things that'll actually I need to start doing jobs that'll actually start pushing my business further yeah and we might I might be hiring somebody here in the next couple of months that'll start pushing my that'll, that'll be a big step so that yeah. that might be a next step for, for my business is, yeah is I know the hire. that's where me and you have differed is where I focus more on the businesses less on the weddings up to this point that's how I got this job this past week with um a, a partnership here in our town that is having an event and they need a video done for this company reached out to me because they didn't have enough people for it and so this is a business that's you know paying pretty well and that's that's where i want to be every single day um right now this is just like one of the first steps and the video i'm so proud of it you know it's something that I feel like it's worth that much money, but or more. it's so rewarding to actually go out and shoot a video that looks so good, you know, literally just making your gear look the best it possibly can. And the people love it, you know? And I, I know I want to push to be at a lot of businesses and have them be returning customers because businesses that are returning customers can give you so many blessings. That's the great thing about working with actual companies is yeah that usually have more than one job for you oh yeah whereas that's not necessarily not true with weddings because you have all your bridesmaids well, and groomsmen that yeah. are going to get married and sisters are going to get married people at the wedding but but it is honestly a the experience. amount of work compared to working with companies typically is insane especially like actually on-site shooting yeah so i might make four thousand dollars in a weekend for 12 hours of work which sounds pretty good but like that entire day is so hectic and crazy. Stressful too. Compared to a 12 hour day with the business. Just where hanging out. Half the time I'm just hanging out. <laughs> hanging out, talking about fun stuff. Just And they're all, and like just all the com- company employees are just like, hey, what do you do? Like what what's going yeah. on here? Tell me about this. And you just get to like meet people, converse mm-hmm. with people, which isn't, it's not, that's not not true about weddings. But most of the people at weddings during the day are really stressed out. Oh, and they're so scared of you too. And they're scared <laughs> they of you. They see you with a big camera and they're just like, oh, uh, 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 is it pointing at me? <laughs> you know? And like businesses, the main difference that I have found between businesses paying you and brides or whoever's paying for the wedding is that a business will be like, how much is it? Okay, here you go. A bride will be like, eh, that's kind of a lot or I was hoping for this range and it can almost be insulting. Sometimes. That that comes down to like the right bride too. Yeah. So right now my weddings business is at a point where if a bride reaches out and they don't like my prices, so, I don't care. Okay. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry to be harsh, but like these are the prices. There's yeah. a reason they're the prices. I can't do it for less than that. Yeah. Like 
And everybody wants a discount. I can't give everybody a discount. Exactly, mm. yeah. And brides, lots of times they have an idea of what they want, especially when they're looking at our sort of price range. They have an idea of what they want, but they don't know how to tell you that. So you're there and like, okay, so these are the type of films that I do. And they're like, okay, but I want this. It's like, well, then why did you book me and not that person? Yeah, when you deliver the edit and they're like, well, I was hoping for something like this. It's like, and I was like, well, why didn't you book the videographer that filmed that? You're like, oh, they're too expensive. There's probably a reason. <laughs> well, in Kansas, they're probably not more expensive than me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Depending on who it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you go out to like, bigger locations i'm definitely yeah. not very expensive but as far as kansas goes i'm and right the, about the, the videos that brides see that they want you to do are normally those very high price eight thousand ten thousand like, dollar hey, weddings hey can you do this eight to ten thousand dollar wedding for me for 300 bucks it's like no that's Damn. not even worth my email to you <laughs> yeah it's um i can film that quality but i need you to spend that kind of money yeah i mean not even that kind of money but like yeah, I can film a wedding that's worth ten thousand dollars to people on the east and west coasts, but in in the market that we are in here in the middle, yeah, like I'll I'll do it for half of that, but I actually need half of that money. Like I can't give you a further discount, yeah, that because I have to hire at least one other, if not two people. I have to rent extra gear, camera bodies. Everything. Like I have to bring so much stuff, and then in the editing room, I've taken twelve hours of footage between six cameras. Throughout the whole day, it's going to take me weeks and probably months to edit this 25-minute yeah. film for you that has a story to it, yeah. has audio all throughout the day, has clips from, you know, six different cameras. Yeah. I mean, the ceremony film is the easiest part of it. Yeah. But, like, if you want me to create this just incredible actual, like, story and film, there's a reason it costs money. Yeah. And it's worth it. It absolutely is oh, worth it. Don't completely. get me wrong. People yeah. that get wedding videos are always, like... They're, they're like, always like, I don't even care about my photos. My yeah. video is so amazing. Yeah. And like, I love taking photos for weddings. I would probably do that full time if I could because it's so easy. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Sorry, no knock on you wedding photographers, but <laughs> your job is so easy. Yeah. I love it so much. It's just your market is saturated. Just but your actual job <laughs> is so freaking easy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. So much easier than video. But um, as we're talking about that, that's another thing where businesses if you tell them your price, they're like, okay, well, I'll get back to you when I'm ready to do that. You know? Yeah. That's what a business will do because and they understand the price behind something. Whereas a bride may well, not. Because they have a value behind it. Exactly. Businesses are investing in a video to get something out of it as far as making money. Like they're mm -hmm. investing in the video for either furthering knowledge for their employees or furthering knowledge for their customers. That's mm -hmm. kind of it. Whereas a, a, a bride is just booking a video to have memorabilia, mm -hmm. which is why you can't really charge the same price. Yeah. I mean, because it's yeah. how do you a, put a price on a memory? You know, that's 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 what I always talk about with the yeah. brides. I was like, I was like, you can book this six hundred dollar wedding videographer, mm -hmm. but but they're not gonna. But he doesn't capture, capture the, the memory. Emotion. He gets he gets a little clip of you here and there. Yeah. But if you book with me, just places clips randomly, no emotion in it, no story, just. Like, if you watch my films, there's a there's a story in it. It tells you about the day. It reminds you what happened. And it's not just like clip after clip after clip. Like, yeah, there's audio from the day. There's, Every I clip mean, is placed where like, it is best. First off, like I spend ten hours just like going through everything and just yeah. and then like writing out time codes, saying this is my favorite clip right here. This this makes me feel this emotion right here. And then when I'm actually like, and I storyboard out, like, this is what I want to happen. This is how I want to tell the story. And then I go through all the audio and I say, this is a really good, meaningful clip of her dad talking to her and just telling her how beautiful she is. And it's like, I, you know, like I curate all those films and it takes so long. Whereas mm -hmm. on, on, for a company, they're like, this is what I want. I want an interview, talking head. Um, and I, I want some B-roll of our farm equipment. And mm -hmm. then I film an interview of a chucking head and some farm equipment. And mm -hmm. then I send them the video. And they're like, amazing. Can you change this one thing? Sure. No. And then we're done. And then for bride, I spent all this time on them. And they're like, 
I hate it. Please change everything about it. Yeah. Mm. Like, hey, can you change and the song? Like, that's, and that is the that is the worst. Yeah, I someone just, said, I just can had, you change the song? I just had to do that. It wasn't because they didn't like the film. It was because there was some copyright infringement thing with it, but mm-hmm. which was really sad. It was a song that their um, best man had played at the wedding. That he'd yeah. written, but he was later going to release the song, and so uh. it couldn't be. It couldn't be used in the wedding video for people to see. So that was really sad yeah. for me. I, I don't blame them at all for me having to redo it. But like that changed everything to that film. And I was so busy during the time when I had to redo that. Mm-hmm. And I did end up redoing it. The film was fine. But it just didn't have the same feel as it. Yeah. Because I couldn't go through and redo the entirety of the story that I'd worked yeah. hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. When, when we create videos, it's not just like putting each clip in there and you're good it's it's finding the right place for that clip where it fits in the song and it 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 takes a lot of time and planning and effort um and we've really gone off on this a long way i hope that answers your question we've gone so far from ai to quantum computers all to every single movie on the board and all the way to like (laughs) wedding filmmaking and brides being stupid it's been good (laughs) so we really appreciate you coming and filling in our our guest spot. I mean, I we definitely should have had you on already. So that was yeah. a good conversation. We didn't really let you talk all that much, though, I'll be honest. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> let's just <laughs> say the, a few t- words t- here and there. What you had to share was really valuable and really meaningful and definitely yeah. sparked some good conversation. We'll have to have you on again, Philip. For we sure. really appreciate you being here. Any last words you have for our viewers? Uh, just check them out and book with them as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's plug your... Uh, Instagram. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, PRD1105. We'll drop that in the description. For sure. And um, for those of you wondering, um, if you've looked at some of my stuff, Philip is in quite a bit of it. So he's kind of like my guinea pig <laughs> that I use uh, for certain things. And he's also kind of a part of my business as well. So he helps me out with certain photo shoots and um, a little bit with social media as well. So uh, big thanks to you, Philip. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in to our podcast. Philip is really cool. Make sure you check him out on Instagram and okay. any other thing that we drop in the description. You are, are you on any other uh, social media platforms? Not, not really. No. Not really, just like kind of Instagram. Yep. Well, anyways, follow him on Instagram and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This podcast comes out every week, Sunday, 3 p.m. on both my channel and Gabe's channel. So make sure you tune in for that. Eventually, if we get like, 10,000 subscribers will make our own (laughs) podcast channel. (laughs) Let's go for 100k first. So if you are interested in upping your photography, videography, and audio production game, make sure you subscribe to the Media Masters uh, podcast and our channels to watch all of our 100% free master classes and megabytes and gigabytes. Those are our weekly videos that just teach you camera basics and working with clients, everything that you need to know to get started producing awesome media content. Every single week on the Media Master Show, we have a new guest um, talking about their area of media and how to succeed in it and how they've kind of conquered that little niche. So make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week for the Media Master Show. Mm-hmm.